and uh, welcome. We're going to do like a tutorial series on OOTP 21. Uh, I'm making this uh, for a buddy who is into baseball and I recently recommended this game and he got it. Uh, and this is one of those games kind of like Europa Universalis or like any of the uh, Paradox titles where like you load it up, uh, you, you, you see it on Steam or something or somebody like recommends it. And uh, the conceit of the game is like, wow, that's really cool. That's something that I really want to get into. And then you open it up and like the menu is so overwhelming and there's so much going on that you're like, okay, well, uh, it, it, maybe I'll get into this when I have a little bit more time. So uh, this is going to be like a little primer for you um, just to, to, I guess, jump in uh, and see what this game's about uh, and hopefully assuage any fears of it being way too uh, complicated for you because if a guy like me can figure it out you can too so we're going to be playing as huge ass um we're going to play in commissioner mode we're not playing in challenge mode uh and i'll explain some of those differences in uh in a little bit uh and we are going to select our team uh and i think for uh an initial challenge a good team to choose will be the baltimore orioles uh generally speaking people buy a game like this and and they'll play like their favorite team first uh and that's that's totally fine. Yeah, you can do whatever you want, um, but I'm kind of at the stage at this uh, with this game where I, I'm in it a little bit more for the challenge, and when you pick a team like Baltimore, whose outlook uh, at the beginning of the 2020 season was pretty terrible, it uh, there's really nowhere to go but up, and it's kind of just a matter of time before, uh, it's just a question of how much time before your outlook starts uh looking a little bit more positive. So we'll go ahead and we'll start the game. And uh, here we are, cool. Uh, displayed player salaries and contract values for MLBPA. Uh, players in this game are not official. Uh, I understand. Um, go away, Discord. Um, cool, so Pete Angelos is our owner and he's given us some goals. Uh, play close to 500 ball, upgrade at left field, keep up Keep building up your team in order to reach the playoff in the next five seasons. Um, yeah, I know it's all I'm good for. Go away. Uh, so this is the main menu, uh, sort of. This game is just kind of a menu game, right? You just are constantly going back and forth uh, between... Go away. Uh, you're kind of just going back and forth uh, between menus the entire game. Um, you can play games actual physical like baseball games um but i kind of tend to let uh ai play it for me and just or let it sim out the way that i think this game is more intended to be um but here let's start uh from let's start from the team home screen so we'll come up here we'll click orioles baltimore orioles team home screen and this is uh where you can kind of go ahead and like meet the team uh team top players we got uh, Trey Mancini, Jose Iglesias, Chance Cisco. Um, that's pretty accurate. You can see that our best players are three and a half star. Uh, these stars go from uh, one to five. Uh, and this game also uses uh, the 20 to 80 scale for baseball ratings. Um, so what that means is I come up here to, uh, to Trey Mancini and we'll see that he's a 70. Uh, and that, that blue color denotes that he is uh, it's 70 out of 80. Uh, so it's um, he, he pretty good. Uh, contact is 70 out of 80 is like like generational talent, <laughs> pretty much. Um, like one of the best in his current generation. Uh, 80 out of 80 would be like I, just Rod Carew, Pete Rose levels of just like spray hitter uh, can hit pretty much anything. And I think one of the few people in this game, like right now off the top of my head, uh, this game has a big boner for... Uh, what's his nuts? Um, Vlad Jr. Yeah, his contact is right now is a 60, but his potential is an 80. And uh, very rarely in this game does he not reach that uh, his his potential of 80. Um, 80 is the max that you can get. Um, and you can see pretty much everything else is uh, it's it's really good. But uh, I don't want to show him off because he's not on our team. Uh, but the game is really high on guys like Vlad Guerrero Jr. And you'll see that this game uh, as like in this particular iteration, this game loves several different players. Uh, Vlad Jr. is one of them. Glaber Torres. Uh, I have like four or five different saves where Glaber Torres uh, consistently hits like 55, 60 home runs. I mean like 
until he's 34, 35 years old. And he winds up crushing Barry Bonds all time home run record uh, and like hits eight or 900 home runs uh, over the course of, uh, of his career. And it's like, it's, it's funny, but it's also like, really, uh, Glaber Torres hitting 60 home runs. Uh, I'm not saying that, I mean, now that MLB is going back to not using a juiced ball, uh, I would be very interested to see how a lot of people who've had power surges in the last three or four years, um, I, I'd like to see what their real power, uh, what real power is because everyone can hit 25 home runs these days. Uh, anyway, so this is our team. The Baltimore Orioles. Um, we're pretty bad. We're uh, actually kind of terrible. Uh, and what you can do is come over here to uh, this MLB tab, uh, come down to reports and info, and we can look at, uh, where is it? Preseason predictions, um, which have not yet been generated because spring training or the first, oh goodness, okay, because we need to go a couple of days um, into the future. Uh, we don't have any access to any of this. Let's just go ahead and sim and see if that gives us something. Uh, I've received a trade proposal already. Interesting. Okay. So, uh, here is manager's office and mail and news. Uh, I tend to check the mail all of the time because you get things like trade, uh, trade proposals, uh, and reports on your players, injuries, um, recoveries from injuries, uh, and just sorts of different sorts of news. You can come down here and set your, uh, like your your filters um some things you can click off like minor awards and being in news stories are pretty boring and i don't i don't really give a shit about that but um you can shortlist players there's a lot of stuff you can do so just real quick uh i'll usually generally speaking come and check my mail after every uh after playing four or five games um and as we continue through the uh through this playthrough, I'll, I'll show you what some of my other settings are. Just uh, we'll try and take this as naturally as possible. So let's take a look at this trade proposal from the Mets. The New York Mets would send 34 year old minor leaguer Jonas Cespedes and Ramon Urias. Oh no, they would get Ramon Urias and Grayson Rodriguez uh, in return. Um, that's an interesting one. Uh, I that's very, very silly of them uh, to think that I would take that. Um, however, at the same time, uh, well, we're not really in, that's like a, that's, that's a move that we might make if we were competing, but we are not anywhere close to competing. Uh, and his last full season was, <laughs> was 2016 and, uh, while very good, um, I don't, I don't think so. That's an $11 million paycheck for, for what is this, 60 games of Ioannis Cespedes? Uh, I don't think so. Um, especially seeing as how Grayson Rodriguez, I think at this point, is our number one prospect, especially uh, absolutely our, our number one pitching prospect. Um, but okay, let's uh, stop faffing about, as they say in Britain. Um, this is our team. This is uh, These are our batters. Brian Holiday, Pedro, Sever or Pedro Severino, Chance Sisko, Chris Davis, uh, who is... Uh, unfortunately probably the most famous player on this team uh and not for the reasons that you uh that he would like to be uh, he is far and away the most expensive player or the most well-played player well played well paid player on this team uh and he will be until 2022 so we've got three more years of chris davis money uh and chris davis production out of whatever uh he decides he can provide um these are some very terrible stats. I mean, that's a full season of hitting 168 with an OPS of 539 and an OPS plus of 46. That is like, that's like 25% worse than a backup catcher should be while providing average defense at first base. 50 is average in this game um, because it's, it, the uh, three standard deviations from the mean uh, between 80 and 20, which 20 being the lowest and 80 being the highest. Uh, so yeah, 1.4 war, two minus 2.8 war. He's he's pretty pathetic, to be uh, brutally honest. Um, and uh, the very very slim chance that uh, he gets his Adderall prescription approved in this game and uh, goes back to hitting 50. 50 bombs for the O's. Um, so we're just going to have to eat this because nobody in their right mind is going to take Chris Davis off of our hands unless 
we were able to swing a package prospect deal. Uh, and I don't know if I would be cool with giving up a prospect. Um, oh, I forgot about Clutch Man, Adley Rushman. Actually, is probably our number one uh, overall prospect. Uh, he's five-star potential, um, and he could hit for a pretty good average while playing good first or playing a solid catcher. Um, but we've got to see these develop first before we uh, before we draw any conclusions. But uh, he's for sure probably our number one um, overall prospect. So what what are we doing right now? So we have the draft pool announcement was yesterday. Uh, today, oh now that I've simmed to it, now it's the first year player draft. So let's just go. Let's jump right into it and let's just uh, let's go to the draft. Okay. Um. Let us. I'm going to keep advanced drafty signings on. Uh, so advanced drafty signings means you're going to be offering bonuses um, to players, and you're going to have so much money that you're trying to like divvy out. Uh, you, you set a budget essentially. What you can do is well, let's just go to the front office real quick, and we can go to. Oh goodness, I've got to have to remember where all of it is. Um, Draft budget. Okay, yeah, here we go. So our draft budget is $12.68 million, uh, which is enough for us to probably make a big impact. Uh, but that's something that can be raised and lowered. Um, these are all settings that I, I, I really want to, uh, to mess with because we can see right here, our player development budget is $9.6 million, whereas the baseline for the league is 12. Uh, so we're at like 75% of what the league spends, um, which is not good whatsoever. Uh, and our draft budget is coming in at about 2 million below, 1.9 million below where it should be for recommended draft slots. Uh, that's bad. And our international free agent budget is 1.87. Uh, we are in dire financial straits, it seems. Um, that's not good. Uh, all right. So let's go to first year player draft. And what we can do is... Uh, either import 2020 draft results, which I actually think we might do. Uh, but let me go over some things first. So uh, turning the advanced draftee signings on or setting this to yes will mean that we will be negotiating bonuses with draftees. Um, if we turn this off, what that essentially means is uh, once we click draft on a player, that means they're drafted. Um, and what I was saying that like if you you go to like the if you're trying to negotiate with them, right, that means that they can always say no. If you don't offer a draftee uh, the signing bonus that they think that they deserve, um, they're not just going to accept it. Uh, they're just not going to accept it. Um, they can say no, and they can uh, refuse to, or they can refuse to sign, and then they go kind of, they go back into the pool for the next season. Um, so uh, even if you're like the Orioles, we have the second round pick, and we're going to get uh, obviously a really good. Let's see, who would it, who could it be? Spencer Torkelson, I think. Yes, yeah, Spencer Torkelson, or Zach Veen, um, or who do we have? Uh, Garrett Crochet, Emerson Hancock, uh, yeah, uh, Kevin Abel, Mick Abel. Um, so essentially, what what I'm saying is like, so let's just. Let's just pretend that we can pick Zach Veen, right? Uh, we look at a guy like Zach Veen, and his bonus demand is nine million. Well, if I remember right, we have like twelve million to to offer for bonuses for the entire draft. Uh, whereas that's I mean, so Zach Veen being the kind of caliber player uh, that he is, uh, a high schooler, um, is probably worth a nine million dollar investment. But what that means is that that really handicaps us uh, in the second, third, fourth. Etc. rounds. Um, so we'd really have to go all in on Zach Veen and a power hitting right fielder um, isn't like, I mean, who's a high schooler, number one, he's only 18 years old, uh, is not exactly the uh, immediate answer to all of the problems that the Orioles have. So those are just kind of the GM balancing uh, decisions that you have to make. Um, is he worth $9 million? Uh, I, I think that I would say yes. Uh, Nine million dollars is generally more of a like a junior college pitcher uh, bonus. I'd be more comfortable giving that to like a Jayco uh, 
college pitcher as opposed to a high school corner outfielder. But uh, the draft isn't particularly good this year. So what we're actually going to do is import 2020 draft. Um, we're going to do that. We're going to hit yes. And the import is complete. And what does that give us? First year player draft. Oh, gosh. He was drafted by West Virginia Whitecaps, uh, Detroit. So I think that means that Heston Kierstad was drafted by us. Yes, we got Heston Kierstad, um, who was a college player. So, okay, yeah, that's much better. Um, I say much better. Uh, I have no idea how much money he got. Uh, well, actually, because we imported the draft results, I think that that just kind of negated any sort of negotiations that we'd have to do. Um, which would make sense. I apologize. That was kind of stupid of me to assume otherwise. So Heston Kierstad is now uh, a prospect of ours. He's 21 years old, which means his ETA is probably within the next three or four years. Uh, these stats don't floor me. Uh, his potential is not... Okay, well, if he lives up to that potential, he's good. He's going to be a very well-rounded, uh, an absolutely solid major league player. Every one of these stats will play. Or every one of these ratings, I say, will play. He's pretty fast, which is good. That helps him out. Um, but <laughs> he'll be a good... Uh, I don't think he's going to be a great right fielder. This game is saying that uh, his best defensive position is right field. Um, it's 50 out of 80. Uh, and the reason that it's telling us that is probably because he spent most games uh, as a right fielder. So these two... These two uh, positional ratings can increase and decrease as he plays more or fewer games in left or center field. So uh, I imagine he hasn't played a whole lot in left field. So that 45 could easily creep up to 50, 55, potentially 60 even, dare I say, in left field. Uh, and that center field, I am pretty confident we could get up to about 50. Um, and as I said, 50 is a baseline. Like 50 is average what an average major leaguer would be able to accomplish um what i see is that his error is really good he doesn't make a whole lot of errors and his range is pretty good too so 60 is is good um arm is really what you want for a right fielder and he doesn't have a fantastic arm it's totally uh it's totally average um you want that arm to be like 65 plus for your right fielder um and once and because that arm is a little bit more excuse me uh, it's a little bit more important for a corner outfielder, or, well, specifically a right fielder. Uh, you can take hits on things like air and range um, and, and be an effective right fielder. Anyway, so uh, that's it. That's the draft said and done. Um, let's take a look at our pitching staff. Uh, Alex Cobb, our <laughs> quote-unquote ace, $14 million through 2021. That's pretty terrible. Um, he pitched to an 11 ERA in 12 innings of work over three starts, which uh, if you do that math is pretty pathetic. His whip was 1.86. Uh, he allowed, Jesus, nine home runs over 12 innings of work. That is not good. No bueno. Um, your home runs allowed, home runs through nine, is going to be reflected in movement. So let's kind of go over these uh, these ratings and what they mean for pitchers and, and hitters. So stuff is like how much, uh, like how good your pitches are. Um, and what I mean by that is, uh, like, do you have a fast fastball and do you have a curveball that you can control and, like, breaks a lot? Um, stuff is kind of an amalgamation of movement and control, uh, but it's also separate from them. Um, stuff is going to affect how many strikeouts you get. Movement is, gonna, is going to affect how many home runs you give up, and control is going to affect how many walks you get. So you can have fantastic control and fantastic stuff and terrible movement, uh, and you can have a guy who doesn't give up a whole lot of walks, strikes out a lot of guys, uh, but allows a lot of home runs. Um, that would be like, I'm trying to think of like a good uh, example of that in real life. Uh, I guess sort of Justin Verlander from a couple years ago uh, kind of ran into that problem. Um, I guess any good pitcher kind of runs into that problem a little bit with the way the balls are juiced. But uh, Alex Cobb at this point right now has got less than average stuff and less than average movement. And that's reflected with his poor home runs for nine innings and his kind of pedestrian K through nine. So like his his K per nine is sitting at like six, six and a half when he's lucky. Um, and in today's day and age, that doesn't that's not good. Like your average pitcher has like, seven or eight k9 uh stat uh for a starter everyone strikes out a lot of people um 
but that movement is really what's going to hinder him. Uh, you don't necessarily need a guy to have fantastic stuff to be effective, right? So he's a pitcher-type ground baller. Um, but that is kind of canceled out by the fact that his movement is 40, right? So his movement is a standard deviation to the left of what is considered average. Uh, and that is, again, uh, I feel like I'm retreading old ground, but that's reflected in him allowing a shit ton of home runs. Uh, and that's a small sample size. I mean, 12 innings is not fantastic, and actually last year he was hurt. Um, but uh, I think it just kind of goes to illustrate the point that uh, baseball is a game that is made up of I mean, like 162 iterations, iterations over a year. But um, even still... Uh, a really shitty 12 innings, uh, that's going to take a long time to normalize. Uh, and then you're going to have to throw in the fact that he's also going to be allowing home runs the rest of the way as well. Um, but he does kind of redeem it, uh, redeem himself by only allowing two walks over those 12 innings, which is really good. Um, but you can also kind of see historically that his walks per nine aren't... Okay, actually, let's go to pitching stats, your career pitching stats. 2.6, okay, that's pretty good. That's okay. That's that's pretty good. Uh, and his career home run per nine is 1.0, which is actually, again, really good. And his career walks have not been historically bad. Um, Alex Cobb, I guess, is <laughs> what I'm trying to say is Alex Cobb has not been a historically bad pitcher up until he signed with Baltimore, and we can see some, you know, uh, the skyrocketing of the ERA. Uh, he's playing in a much more hitter-friendly park, obviously. So um, your things like ERA plus are going to be adjusted for that and even with an era plus of 88 after throwing for 4.90 that's pretty bad um era plus and ops plus are normalized for the park that you play in it's adjusted uh, for that factor um so yeah that means that he's 12 percent worse than an average pitcher would be than the average era would be at camden yards uh so didn't want to spend that much time talking about Alex Cobb, but I guess we kind of should have because he's a uh, he's our ace. Uh, then we got John Means, who's uh, actually looks a little bit better, uh, in my professional opinion. Uh, another control freak who just doesn't have fantastic stuff. Uh, so uh, slightly better than average fastball, slightly better than average slider. He's got a good average curveball, and he's got a changeup. So. Um, However, he's a fly ball pitcher, and his movement is not flashy. It's not particularly good. Uh, but he did only allow 27. No, I'm an idiot. 23 uh, in 155 innings of work. So that's not... Uh, I certainly wouldn't call that terrible. Uh, and again, you have to realize that he played in Camden Yards. Um, he was actually pitched to a one point or to a one thirty ERA plus, which is which is actually really good. That's kind of impressive, uh, to be quite honest. Um, and the fact that he's a fly ball pitcher hurts him. Uh, but yeah, uh, this dude is going to go out there and he's going to give us six or seven innings, and we're probably going to be in a position to lose when he comes out. But hey, um, whatever. It's the Orioles. Uh, following him is Tommy Malone. Oh, good lord. Um, this dude has a 30 movement. That is that is not good. Uh, allowed 24 home runs in like 111 innings. That is that is really bad. Oh, good lord. Okay, well, another guy who's pretty good on control. <laughs> His personality trait is exceptionally unexceptional. Um, yeah, okay, uh, fair enough. Um, wow, okay. We're, we're just gonna have to deal with it, I guess. Then, then we've got Asher Wojciechowski, who I'm burping a lot, so I'm I'm really sorry uh, if you're hearing that. Uh, probably has the best stuff out of anybody we've looked at so far. That that you can chalk that up to having a really good fastball and a really good changeup and a pretty good slider as well. Um, but again, movement comes back to bite us in the ass. Uh, overall two star, I think. Oh, he's an extreme fly ball pitcher. That is. Not good. Ooh. That is really bad when coupled with that movement. Yeah. So your home run through nine, you, you don't really want that to be any more than like 1.2, 1.3. Uh, and 
the meta of baseball these days uh, kind of dictates, uh, kind of hinders you. Um, but uh, I don't know where I'm going with this thread. Anyway, uh, Asher Wojciechowski. Not, I think this dude actually could low-key be the best pitcher on uh, our best starter, I think. I don't know. It really depends on that movement. Um, and then Michael Bauman. This dude could be good. He's only 24. Well, he's an old 24. He's going to turn 25 during the season, but that's not that bad. Uh, average stuff, average movement, and eh, control. Um, good stamina, 65. That's that's not bad. Never pitched above double A, and here he is uh, as our fifth man. But he had good numbers uh, in 2019, it looks like. Yeah, that's good. Four war over... 22 stat or 22 starts. Someone said stats. Someone's for a war with 22 stats, huh? Uh, this dude's from Minnesota. He wouldn't have a Boston accent. Um, anyway, uh, onto our bullpen, Michael Gibbons, who's good. Yes, we can work with Michael Gibbons. He's got a wonky delivery. He's like a. This says three quarters, but if I remember right, Michael Gibbons is like a totally sidearm slinger uh, delivery. Yeah, he's been Baltimore's closer ever since uh, what's his nuts what's his nuts uh, left uh, Zach Britton, I think I think that's right. And then Tanner Scott, Tanner Scott is far and above the best pitcher best best uh, best pitcher we have, uh, and that's due to his fastball and slider being wow, 80 out of 80. He just has a shit ton of movement and a shit ton of stuff, but his control is going to really really hamstring him. Uh, but if he could get that control, uh, so I should say that. These potential ratings and these current ratings, for that matter, of course, obviously, this should go without saying. Um, even your potential ratings have the ability. I mean, ha there's a chance that they could increase or decrease, right? So um, that control could, if we got, you know, if we surrounded them with the right, uh, what should I say? If we surrounded them with the right um, conditions, uh, like a good pitching coach uh, and like pumped a shit ton of money into our player development that control could go up to like 50 uh, and if we got that control to 50 this dude would be a ridiculous oh uh, a ridiculous closer i just noticed tomorrow is his birthday um he will then be 26 and yeah so this dude this dude could be really good okay back to pitching staff and then richard blyer who's another oh no i was gonna say i remember him being a pretty good pitcher um but that era is pathetic hunter harvey uh, yeah. Okay. So generally what the bullpen is saying, uh, and, and what, how this game kind of differentiates, uh, like starters and relievers is number one, your stamina is always going to be a little bit lower. Uh, 50 is average stamina. You can get away with the guy with 45. You can actually set, uh, in your pitching staff. So like you can set a pitch count. So if I wanted Alex Cobb to not embarrass himself for more than a hundred pitches, I could just be like, 100, right? And then that means that when he pitches, he's only going to throw 100 pitches, regardless of how well he's pitching. If it doesn't matter if he's throwing a perfect game, um, however unlikely, uh, I could make, I could ensure that he's not going to throw more than 100 pitches. Uh, and so that's how you kind of mitigate a guy with bad stamina. But I don't think any of our pitchers have like bad stamina. No, they're all actually pretty solid, except for John Means is a little bit above average, but everyone else is like 60 or, or, or more. But then you've got a guy like Michael Givens. Um, now, Aside from stamina, the other thing you want is your your, your starter has to have three pitches. Um, that's really not a negotiable thing. Um, a real, this is just kind of endemic. This is just like baseball meta 101. But your pitcher, your, your your relievers have like two pitches. Generally speaking, they have two really really good pitches that they can control and throw for strikes. Um, so like Craig Kimbrell has that knuckle curve and that fastball. Um, and if he ever brings out like a changeup or something, you're going to hear people be like, wow, changeup. He probably hasn't done that since, you know, he, he, since before he was shaving or something like that. Uh, but like Michael Gibbons has three really, really good pitches, a fastball, a slider, and a changeup. Um, the only thing keeping this guy from being a good starter is the fact that his stamina is 30, which is really, really bad. Um, if we go and we take a look at another guy who's only got two pitches, like Tanner Scott, fastball and slider, um, and his stamina is also only 30, uh, this guy would not, like, if you gave him an emergency start, he would go two innings max before he would start getting rocked. Um, 
because uh, I guess the ideologies, you know, with, you've got with a guy like Alex Cobb, you've got one, two, five pitches that you've got to guess from, um, all of which he throws uh, pretty effectively. Um, and even though they're not good pitches in a vacuum, he has enough of them that are going to keep you guessing. And they're all like kind of different enough too. So like that splitter, knuckle curve, sinker, are, 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 and changeup are, are, are similar or different enough from each other, plus the fastball, um, that he can kind of keep you off balance like that. Uh, so that's how he is able to deal with, you know, going through the lineup two or three times. Whereas a guy like Tanner Scott are, uh, is, is not going to be able to do that. Um, half of that's because of the stamina and half of that is the fact that he only has three pitches. So, um, enough about that. Then we got, uh, Miguel Castro, Travis Lincoln, Sr., uh, Cole Stewart, Evan Phillips, and Paul Fry. None of these guys are really good. This Evan Phillips guy is actually really, really bad. This dude belongs in like double A and, and that's generous. So these stars are like relative to the major league. Uh, to like a ma major leaguer. This dude does not belong at the major leagues. There's no world where this dude uh, should be smelling the major leagues. And yet he pitched 28 innings last year and actually had positive war. I am rather shocked. Okay, that's a little bit due to his, his being extremely unlucky with his BABIP. He did strike out 13 Hmm, that's a pretty good K-9, and his walks were pretty terrible. Uh, anyway, uh, that's uh, those are our pitchers, and then we've kind of sort of gone over these guys. Jay Mancini, the obvious star of the show for us. I think he's DHing, isn't he? Nope, DJ Stewart is. Yeah, DJ Stewart. Totally, totally average. Home run power is 60. Even though it says home run power is 60, I kind of think of home run power is 60 as, like, average. Everyone's got... 60 power these days um these guys don't they've got like 50s but even so 50 home runs in 162 games that's like 18 or 19 bombs that's still enough power to like you can't just groove a fastball chris davis still has 55 power and a 60i if he had contact of like 40 he might actually have positive war or at least not negative uh reynaldo nunez has 60 power hanser alberto has 45 but his contact is 70 that's really good his eye is bad. We'll go over some of these stats as the season continues, but right now we just have, don't have a whole bunch to, uh, to work with. Um, we've got Jose Iglesias as uh, our shortstop. Uh, I think I actually kind of want to move him to like the number one spot, but we, we might just actually let the game... Oh, Anthony Santander is pretty good. He out, Outside of Trey Mancini and Austin Hayes, who uh, actually... Usually, actually, Austin Hayes usually turns into a pretty solid baseball player, uh, at least in my saves. Okay, so uh, enough of that. Um, we'll go over some of like the roster stuff. Uh, essentially, the way that I'm going to take this is we're going to cross every bridge when we get to it, and I'm going to try and give uh, a little bit of an analysis on like stats uh, when I feel like it's appropriate. But uh, I think. With games like this, what you've got to do is just immediately go in there and start playing. Uh, we're not going to be able to like swing 30 wins this year. Uh, frankly, if we win 20 games this year, I'm going to be a little surprised, uh, especially given with how terrible our pitching is and how inflated offensive numbers are with the uh, home runs. So like the ball is juiced um, in 2020. Uh there's talk about MLB de-juicing it for 2021, but that's kind of a moot point. But the game doesn't simulate there being juiced balls by by introducing like a plus 10% across the board for everybody's power. They they like just automatically give people power, which I guess it, at the end of the day just winds up being the same thing. But it kind of artificially inflates everybody's power. So a guy like Reynaldo Nunez who has 60 power, like IRL, if you didn't have juiced balls, maybe that's a 50. I don't know. Um, we, we don't know. And that's kind of the shitty thing about these juiced balls. You got guys like Luke Voigt and Christian, <laughs> Christian Vasquez hitting 20 bombs, uh, a year, which I mean, good for them. They're taking advantage of a juiced ball, but whatever. Okay. Let's go to opening day. I received a personal message. Okay. Season expectation is to stay close to an even record. Uh, the fact that we have a shortened season is going to mean that that's a little bit easier to overcome. Uh, top 100 prospects, Wander Franco, Nate Pearson, Adley Rushman is actually the number three. 
That's interesting. Luis Robert. Uh, I hear people say Luis Robert. Um, I is is that right? I don't know. I think it's the I think it's Luis Robert. That just sounds more. I, I guess call me racist, but like foreign. You just you know you don't say it like Robert, Luis Robert, whatever. Where's he from actually? Cuban. Ciego de Avila. Okay, uh, I'm gonna go with Robert. Uh, Joey Bart, Bobby Witt Jr., Mackenzie Gore, Casey Mize, uh, Joe Adele. Royce Lewis. I actually had a save with Joe Adele, a Marlins save from like OOTP 2017, where this dude like hit 500 home runs out of 300 career average and was like Mike Trout in the outfield or in center field, or better than Mike Trout. I think I think Mike Trout might be a little overrated defensively, but don't crucify me. Um, not saying he's not a, like the best player of the generation, but I do think that if you stuck him in left field, uh, never mind. I think Mookie Betts is better than Mike Trout, but whatever. Um, I'm a Red Sox fan. Uh, not that that matters one one bit, but I whatever. Uh, it does it does not matter. Today's opening day for other people. Uh, the Red Sox are starting Colin McHugh. Interesting. And Aaron Judge is silent. Oh God. Uh, <laughs> broken collarbone five weeks. This dude, his injury proneness is fragile. He's 28 years old. Aaron Judge, dude, you know what? You know what I hate at the beginning of every season uh, is when somebody trades for someone, uh, a team trades for a player, and then all the all the fans are like, man, if he can stay healthy, he's going to have a good season. And I'm like, do you know how big of a qualifier the if he can stay healthy is for some people? Like Aaron Judge and John Collar Stanton and just so many people it's like dustin Pedroia. if he can stay healthy yasiel puig signed with the gigants good for them okay our first game uh will feature alex cobb versus colin McHugh at boston uh and what we can do actually is i can show you the uh, interface for uh the game uh of an actual baseball game and then uh once the shiny newness newness has uh, worn off of that we can progress into um simming them okay so let's uh let's play the game continue button oh i don't want to do that go away all right so we're creating pictures the red Sox. what the red Sox. the red Sox are starting ben and at leadoff jd martinez that is a pretty interesting lineup what do I know? Colin McHugh's in overall three and a half stars. He didn't throw a pitch for the Red Sox last year, but whatever. Um, cool. Okay. Uh, DJ Stewart, Chance Cisco, Anthony Santander, Renato Nunez, Trey Mancini, Rio Ruiz, Austin Hayes. Huh. Um, let us actually do some finagling here. I don't think DJ Stewart should be leading off. I'd rather have a guy like Austin Hayes who's like got stupid speed. I thought he was faster than that, actually. Okay. Uh, Austin Hayes, followed by Anthony Santander, and then I think Trey Mancini hits third, Renato Nunez, with Rio Ruiz hitting fifth. Uh, yeah, I think I do like that. And then Jose Iglesias can do the whole like 1980s second leadoff man thing, despite having an eye of 30. Anyway, uh, and then Chris Davis can sit on the bench and think about all the the bad shit he's done. Uh, attendance of zero. All right, let's uh, let's do let's let's do it. Let's start the game. Okay. Uh, normally there would be uh, audio with this. I don't know if I have it disabled or what. I, I don't quite care. Okay. So the, so exact. Uh, all right. English. It's hard. Okay. So up here at the bottom, these are our controls. <laughs> up here at the bottom. Jesus. Okay. Up here at the top are our controls. One, swing away. Two, take pitch. Three, bump for hit. Um, and then we can do like quick play stuff, but I don't want to do any of that. So generally speaking, what I'm going to do is I'm going to demonstrate uh, what you can do by hitting these buttons. Um, I'm going to let Austin Hayes swing away against Colin McHugh. So I'm going to hit one on my number pad. You can also click it up here. And he goes into the windup. And he swings and uh, he strikes out. Go away, discard. I could disable it, but I'm an idiot. Okay. Um, so what that did is I, I 
allowed him to do... Uh, I, I told him to swing away until the end of the at-bat, and then we're going to hit space to, to reset it. Um, look, can we mute everything? Okay. Uh, now, same thing with the uh, at-bat until risp. No. Uh, no. Pitch by pitch, huh? Oh, interesting. I, I, th I feel like I knew about this, and then I didn't. Okay, if I do this pitch by pitch, what's going to happen is... Um, when I hit swing away for this first one, uh, he may or may not swing. Um, but pitch by pitch, if I turn it off, it's like, okay, well, swing away until something happens, if that makes sense. Uh, so right now, that's an OO count. And if I hit one, it's just going to simulate the at-bat as if I told, uh, assuming that I'm telling Anthony Santander to swing away at whatever pitch I wanted to swing away at. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing. Oh, and Santander uh, yanks one into right field, uh, and that's a base hit. Okay. Uh, a kind of a janky thing with this game, uh, or specifically this aspect of the game, uh, is balls will be put into play that look like they're going to be caught, uh, but these sprites that are here on the field representing position players don't... It's not like MLB The Show where, like, it, it looked like Alex Verdugo could have caught that if he laid out. They're just really, really basic representations of the action that's going on the field. Um, it's not really meant to be a one-for-one -one kind of thing. Okay. Uh, Santander's at first base. we got Trey Mancini, our big bat up, and uh, we'll let him swing away. And he swing. yep, a 3-2 count, and he uh, strikes out. So McHugh's already up to two strikeouts. Uh, we'll let Reynardo Nunez swing away, and he shoots one to second base, and, yep, there's the put out. Okay. Um, fair enough, we got a hit, got our first hit. Um, this is, I think, where the, the true struggle is going to be, is going to be on our uh, on the pitching end of things. Um, so, uh, for pitching, there's, I think, a little bit more strategy that goes around, um, or at least there is to begin with. So, uh, pitch, pitch around, pitch to contact, pitch out. Uh Hit. You can also visit the mound. He hasn't thrown a pitch yet. You can hit the batter. You can intentionally walk him. Uh, hold runner, all these other things. Um, they are tools in your toolbox for you to uh, to use. Um, things like pitch to contact really work when you're a guy who's like a ground ball pitcher and you're like pitching in a big ballpark like Petco. Um, in Fenway Park with this, like a guy like Andrew Benintendi with only 45 power, uh, maybe I want to pitch to contact. I think right now what I'm going to do is just pitch and see what happens. So now he's going to yank one to like the red seat, and uh, I'm going to regret saying that. But I'm just going to uh, go ahead and pitch to him. And it's a uh, nice, uh, easy play at first base. Uh, now we're going to throw it to J.D. Martinez. And he grounds out to the shortstop. Now we're going to throw it to Devers. And uh, he sees singles, then to Bogarts. Okay. Shoots that one up the middle. And it looks like there might be a play at third, but he's safe. All right, so Alex Verdugo's up. He's got 75 contact and 55 power. There are two outs. Um, I've got 11 pitches on me. You can see how many pitches you've thrown down here. Uh, so you've got the portrait of your pitcher. You've got pitches. Uh, thrown 11. My stamina, it, it kind of just throws you your, your stats so far. Um, oh, I didn't realize it uh, stayed like that. I would also actually kind of like to bring this down here. Now they're not even, and that's going to bother me. So there. Okay, close enough for government work. All right, we're going to throw to Verdugo, and it looks like he's going to single. Okay. Uh, Jackie Bradley Jr. has 65 power in this game. Interesting. Okay, and he uh, pops it up to first base, and that's all she wrote. Okay, well, uh, three hits and a run scores with two outs, but I'm not too terribly pissed about that. It could have been a lot worse. Uh, Nunez looks like he's going to double down the line. Uh, and you can kind of skip forward the uh, the animations by hitting space. Uh, now Chance Sisko's got a man in scoring position, and he's going to, wow, Jesus Christ. Oh, I thought that was out of here. Um, he doubles, so game's tied on a chance this could double. Now, DJ DJ Stewart strikes out, and now hands her Alberto. Okay, I thought that was going to get through. Um, and then Jose Iglesias will <laughs> strike three called. Okay, whatever. All right, at least we tied it. 
And if I do something other than uh, swing away or um, pitch to player, uh, I will let you know what I'm doing. Mitch Moreland's got 40 contact. I feel like that's a little bit um, ungenerous. Okay, lazy fly ball. Have we struck anybody out with Cobb? I don't think we have. McHugh's got four Ks and two innings of work, though. Okay. Ooh, thought that was going to get down. All right, there's a base hit for Mancini, and Nunez comes up and will fly out to... Okay. Whatever. Not too terribly miffed. Again, uh, Alex Cobb, two innings of work. No walks, but also no strikeouts. And now it's uh, dark. It just got super dark in the game. Uh, leadoff single for Ben Benintendi. And it looks like double play ball, maybe? No, he held on to it. Interesting. Okay. What the hell? J.D. Martinez was running? And we... He's out. Okay. What in the world was going on there? Devers didn't swing. Oh, shit. That's a good thing, because he just yoinked one down the left field line. Uh, and Devers will have himself a double. All right. Well. Come on. Okay, good. So it didn't come back to haunt us. That's good. Um, I don't want to jinx it, but... Three innings of work and uh, only one run for the Sox. <clears throat> and there goes Rio Ruiz. I thought that was going to squeak into the pole. All right. Is that his second double? I feel like it is, isn't it? Yeah. He's got two doubles. All right. Now it's uh, Chance Sisko's turn. Let's see if he can chase him in. Oh, my God. Are we? Are you Are you serious? <laughs> Chance Sisko and Rio, Rio Ruiz. God, that's a tongue twister. Both have doubles, two doubles, have a pair of doubles. Uh, now we're leading two to one. Now DJ Stewart, all he has to do, I just need him to, I might bunt uh, just to kind of show off. No, I'm not going to do that. It's the fourth inning. Um, I could bunt. Uh, if it was like the seventh or eighth inning, I would bunt with Stewart uh, to get the runner to third base with one out. Um, but it's too early to be playing that kind of ball. Um we need big innings, and we've got somebody like Alex Cobb on the mound who's kind of a ticking time bomb. Uh, and this Red Sox offense, even though it was pretty anemic last season, uh, well, it wasn't really that anemic, but um, they could put up a crooked number pretty quick. So I think we've got to kind of fight fire with fire and uh, and, and go, for big, uh, go for big innings, and bunting is not part of a big inning. But... Uh, Striking out is also not part of a big inning. Uh, well, that's you. You uh, you roll the dice, and sometimes you win, and sometimes you lose. But whatever. Oh God! See, now I'm not going to get anything. Two outs, and that runner's still on second base. Uh, whatever. It's up to Jose Iglesias, and he's going to roll out to short too. Okay. Well, even being conservative is a gamble in this game. All right, Alex Cobb, let's see. Can you get a strikeout? No. You will allow a double? Or are we going to gun him down? No, he's safe. Okay, whatever. Lead off double and then... <laughs> are you kidding me? Are you serious? <laughs> All right, I see you, game. All right. <laughs> okay, well, uh, they are losing and... Um, <laughs> what happened there uh if you couldn't see was uh jackie bradley bunted <laughs> with nobody out in a man on second which is what i was debating i don't want to explain the joke but they did exactly what uh i said i would didn't want to do because it was only the fourth inning um and they're probably going to get a run out of it and uh i <laughs> they're gonna tie the game up uh, all Chavis has to do is put the ball in play, and he doesn't. And because he's Michael Chavis, I knew that was going to happen. Uh, but now what's happened is instead of having a man on second and two outs, or and one out, they have a man on third and two outs. Um, and with a guy with not a ton of contact like Mitch Moreland, 
uh, you know, it could go any way. Um, what I'm going to do, I don't want to pitch around him to pitch to Vasquez. I think that the matchup is a little bit better against Mitch Moreland. Um, he's got to hit the ball a country mile uh, to, wow, I just realized our outfield is not really optimal. Okay, that's not terrible. Okay, uh, let's do pitch by pitch. Let's just see. Okay, let's um, let's pitch around. Let's see if he's swinging. Okay, he will. Uh, he'll take a pitch. All right, one and zero or zero and one. I'm sorry. Uh, now we can kind of do a little bit better at the pitching around. Let's just pitching around is going around the zone. It's also kind of it shows. Uh, it kind of showcases that even if you tell the pitcher to pitch around like that, I imagine when I say pitch around, the first thing he's going to throw is like a fastball, uh, an inch or two off the plate away from Moreland. But what he just threw was a strike. So, um, I don't know how well he did with the execution there. Okay. We got a ball and a strike. I think we're going to pitch to just throw a pitch. Let's see a ball inside two and one. It looked like, all right, let's pitch to contact a little bit. I do not want to give in to Moreland, but Okay, a little podunk ground ball, and it didn't come back to bite us. Okay, we're not going to do pitch by pitch anymore because I just wanted to. I did that to uh, to increase the tension. Colin McHugh up here with five Ks. Uh, Alex Cobb, I, I tip my hat to you. <laughs> tip my hat. Good lord, I, I swear I can speak. All right, Austin Hayes to third to Raffy Taffy across the diamond for an out. Now it's Santander's turn. And he strikes out. Now it's Trey Mancini. And he will roll out to show it. Okay. Well, Alex Cobb up here has four solid innings, it looks like. Uh, 56 pitches. We're not um, in panic mode. And grounder to second. Now to Betty Teddy. Uh-oh. Oh, boy. Oh, that was a lot higher. Or it didn't look as deep as, uh, or it looked a lot deeper than it was at first off the bat. Okay, J.D. Martinez, are we going to have a clean inning? We are. Cool. Okay, well, strike out J.D. Martinez for our second K. Um, and we still have the lead. That's good. Okay, pretty pedestrian. And Rio Ruiz, who's two for two, and now he's three for three. Okay, that's good. Rio Ruiz... So far, let's see if Chance Cisco can come up and hit his third double of the day. I doubt it. Statistically, not not a fantastic chance. But uh, Colin McHugh has 75 pitches uh, through four and a third. And Chance Cisco's up here. Hmm, what do we do? Chance Cisco is a candidate for a ground ball uh, double play. But I don't care. I think he's. I'm going to ride the hot hand. Ooh, he hit him. Okay, interesting. He did that. On an 0-0 pitch. Uh, I don't think that was intentional. Um, interesting. Yeah, you definitely didn't want to do that. Uh, if there were no outs, I would absolutely 100% bunt with DJ Stewart in this particular instance. Um, but there is only one out. Uh, but there's one out. So um, I would be putting a pair of men into scoring position with my number eight hitter up. Uh, they could walk Alberto to load the bases for Jose Iglesias, who doesn't particularly run well and also doesn't have a ton of power. Uh, so that gamble would not really come back to help me at all. Uh, oh God. And then he strikes out. Okay, Hanser Alberto, Alberto's got 75 contacts, so I just want him to put the ball into play. Let's see what happens. Uh-oh, ball four, and the... <laughs> Uh, it's a moot point. Jose Iglesias comes up with the bases loaded and two out anyway. Isn't it funny? Isn't baseball a funny game? All right, let's see. Let's take a pitch. I'm going to hit two. Okay. Ball. Ball one. Uh, okay. Let's take another pitch. Low. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. Um, two and oh. What I'm going to do is not steal home. That's a button I've yet to press. I don't have the sack. All right, a 2 0 pitch to Jose Iglesias with 35 power. I'm going to take another one. Okay, fastball for strike one. Now I'm just going to swing away. I've put him in a good count. Let's see what happens. Oh my God. He just rockets one into the right field corner. That is perfect. Oh my goodness. Are we going to. Is he going to hit a triple? He is. 
Look at that. A basis clearing triple. It said double up here, but I think it's a triple. Look at that. Wow. Okay. Wow. Or did they count it as a throwing error? Nope, it's a triple. It's a basis clearing. Uh, maybe it was a double and he took third on the throw. But wouldn't that go? No, that doesn't go as an error. Okay, well, that's a, an instance where... Uh, oh, they brought in Josh Taylor. Interesting. Okay. Well... Uh, Jose Iglesias is uh, sitting at third base, the hero. Two outs. I can't believe that happened. Um, good for us. All right, Austin Hayes, I'm just going to let you swing away. And, okay. Well, we got four runs or three runs out of it. That's good. Uh, that Those kind of innings with two outs, the bases loaded, and your number nine hitter up. Yeah, I'll, I'll take that for a dollar. Okay, Alex Cobb up to 65 pitches. He only threw nine last inning. Let's see how he does against uh, the heart of the Red Sox order. And Devers will start it off with a base hit. Xander Bogarts is up, and there's a pass ball, and I can already smell... Uh, I can already smell uh, the comeback beginning. All right. Good. Grounder to first. Uh, now the Sox could, with Alex Verdugo, probably square Devers, but I don't really care at this point because uh, we've still got the lead. Ugh. Walked Verdugo for Jackie Bradley Jr. I'm going to pitch to contact here. I don't want to walk Bradley. Uh, yep, and look at that. Double play ball? Yes, sir. Okay. Got away with one there. All right. Anthony Santander, uh, actually, with that, uh, I'm going to start warming somebody up in the bullpen. Uh, I really do not want to lose this game because this is gone. This is this is gone. <laughs> this is a testament to my managerial skills and how good of a baseball man I am. Um, I'm going, <laughs> and now I'm I'm going to pull uh, an analytics department and uh, and probably pull my starter who's gone six strong and still has gas in the tank for. Uh, a statistically better pitcher. Who do the Red Sox have up? Uh, it looks like Chavis. Chavis, Moreland, Vasquez. I'd love to bring in a lefty to face Moreland, uh, but Chavis hits lefties really well. Uh, and Moreland really has 40 contacts, so I think I'm going to... Uh, let's do Hunter Harvey. Let's just do Hunter Harvey. Uh, and Anthony Santander yoinks one. Through the hole there. All right, good. Now Trey Mancini. Did he just roll into a double play? He did. All right, whatever. That's cool. I don't really care. Now Reynado Nunez up, and he will ground out to second base. All right, that's fine. Okay, Alex Cobb up to 77 pitches now. I think, I think, I think what we're going to do is let Cobb pitch to Chavis and Moreland, and then we'll bring in Harvey for Vasquez. Um... And if you're asking me why, you know what? No, I'm just going to let Cobb pitch to all three unless he gets into trouble. Um, he will not face Andrew Benintendi for a fourth time. Cool. And we strike out Chavis. Now from Moreland. Oh, God. Piss missile to first base, but it's snagged. Okay. Now it's Christian Vasquez. Now, uh, I think this is Cobb's last batter. And I think we're going to get away with it. Seven strong out of Alex Cobb. Can you believe it? I can. All right, cool. Well, that just means uh, Hunter Harvey, you are our new pitcher. Let's, um, I'm sorry. Uh, I will, let's go to Baltimore Substitutions, and we're just going to drag Harvey up here. Cannot replace the pitcher yet. Oh, well. Forgive me, I thought I could. Um, let's go. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Okay, well, we just struck out. Chance Cisco, uh, your turn. And Josh Taylor has another strikeout. And now it's DJ DJ Stewart. Uh, I could be playing matchups here. Um, and a smart pitcher or a smart manager would. Uh, who do we even have? We got Chris Davis, but they've got a lefty on the mound, so there's no, no chance I do that. Okay, and it looks like, ooh, DJ Stewart going to... Nope, he's not. Okay, uh, now we can put uh, Hunter Harvey in. Yes, Hunter Harvey's our new pitcher. Uh, and I am going to keep 
uh, specifically for Devers, Verdugo, and Bradley, I'm going to start warming up a lefty, Tanner Scott, our best pitcher probably. All right, Hunter, don't mess this up. Okay, all right, I like that. Let's see. And we strike out J.D. Martinez, and now it's Rafi Taffy. Let's see. How is it going to happen? And then he rolls one to – okay. A uh, missile to a shortstop, but we uh, throw him out. We've got a 5-1 lead going into the bottom – or the top of the top of the ninth. I like that. Okay. That uh, that makes me feel good. Uh, that means Xander Bogarts will lead off the inning um, facing, I think, Tanner Scott. Yes. Uh, and then Scott will have Bogarts for Dugo Bradley. Um, if there's somebody on base, I won't let him pitch to Chavis. Um, and what that means is I also probably need to start warming up Michael Givens just in case. Um, but yeah, I do not like throwing, uh, lefty, uh, I do, I do not like having a lefty on the mound with Michael Chavis. He just, he scares me. <laughs> okay. Hands are up, Berto. What you going to do, big dog? Okay. Uh, a lot of lazy ground outs to the pitcher. I see. Oh, wow. All right. And is he going to catch that? What happened? Okay, I think he, that's a base hit. All right, Anthony Santander facing Matt Barnes. Santander's playing left. Uh, let's see what happens. Okay, Santander's been hit. Now Trey Mancini's up. Men in scoring position and two outs. Let's see. Let's put this baby on ice. Ball four. Interesting, interesting. Renato Nunez. Okay, here's an interesting... Uh, I could pinch hit Chris Davis. Why would I do that? Renato Nunez has better contact and better power against righties than Chris Davis, who's a lefty. Um, Renato Nunez, however, is 0 for 4. I think he's 0 for 4. Yes, he is 0 for 4. Um... And, like, I don't know, we're paying Chris Davis $23 million to sit in a dugout uh, for 60 games. Um, let's do it. Uh, if the Red Sox come back, uh, they're going to make me sad. Yeah, we're, we've done it. The, the die is cast. Let's see what happens. And, okay, well, at least he made contact. That's good. Um while it's not reflected in this game, I like to think that that would give him a bit of a confidence boost. That we were willing to put him in a high leverage situation. Uh, we, we put him up there. And the fact that he even put wood on the ball is kind of impressive, to be totally honest. Okay, uh, Tanner Scott will replace Hunter Harvey. Yes, uh, Chris Davis will be playing first base. And that's it. All right, let's see. Let's go. And a ground out from Bogarts. That's good. Alex Verdugo will. <sighs> Base hit. That's not bueno. All right. Jackie Bradley. Let's see what happens. Oh, goodness. Okay. All right. Well, now. All right. I said I would not let Tanner Scott face Michael Chavis with men on base. Uh, and I said that a few minutes ago. Um, and I'm really thinking about it right now. And the fact that there is only one out, I'm 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 replacing him. Uh, I'm I'm gonna replace him. I'm not letting this game slip away. Yep. All right. Michael Gibbons is now pitching to Michael Chavis, and Chavis hits a Jesus Christ. <laughs> he hit that thing off the screen. That's nuts. Um, okay, and that means that Michael Gibbons is going to be pitching to Moreland. What I could have done there, actually, is probably walk... No, that would have been really stupid. I almost said what I could have done is walk Chavis to load the bases for Mitch Moreland. But that would have just put the tying run at the plate with a power hitter in Mitch Moreland, and they could have just pinch hit. Uh, who do they have? Who could they have pinch hit? Kevin Pillar or Rosny Castillo would have been a good call. Yairo Munoz, even. I, I would have said... I would have said Kevin Pillar in that particular instance, but uh, moot point. Uh, Michael Gibbons is now pitching to Mitch Moreland, and let's see what happens. Mitch swings, and oh, the Baltimore Orioles have defeated the Boston Red Sox 5-1. to one. That is how you manage your way to a W, ladies and gentlemen.
you see that little win probability spike down? That was when they had runners on. Uh, but you're smarter than me. You knew that already. Okay, well, uh, at the end of the game, it gives you, like, this uh, this cool little screen. Um, gives you, like, a, a, a really quick um, summary of what happened. Uh, Michael Givens actually got the save there. Uh, Alex Cobb, seven hits, struck out three, walked one. That's really good. That's a whip of, like, one point, like, one-ish something. That's that's pretty good. I'm, uh, I'm pretty pretty pleased with Alex Cobb's performance in the game. Uh even Tanner Scott allowed two hits, but we uh, mitigated that by putting in Michael Givens against um, Michael Chavis. And uh, the better Michael won in that particular instance. But um, I am going to uh, leave this game. And I will uh, continue recording in, in just a minute. Um, I'm going to continue doing this. Uh, this is not the first time that I've done a 2020 start with the Baltimore Orioles. Uh, I have been pretty successful in the past with the Orioles. Uh, it takes a couple of seasons, but you can get them into a position where they're they're uh, they're in contention, and you can do it within four or five years um, if you do it correctly. Uh, we're going to see if we do do that. Uh, this is not in challenge mode, so it's not going to be recording anything. But I'm going to show some things that you can do in challenge mode, or what with challenge mode disabled. Um, so uh, we will uh, continue this uh, next time.